Outfield preview, part one. Let's focus on the top 20 at the position. Up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. Today is Wednesday, February 15th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White. And let's start off with a little outfield strategy and outlook. Scott, much like third base, very strong position up top and then falls off of a cliff. Fill in yeah. the blank. I want <laughs> blank of my top blank outfielders. Go. Uh, three of my top 30 slash 35 it's hard to know exactly where that cutoff is. I mean, if I can get three of my top 22, that would be amazing. I would have no worries at all. Cause, cause there are kind of, there are kind of a couple different drop offs in the outfield. First of all, you got seven going in the first round on average, and you can make an argument for an eighth Mike Trout. So very loaded in that first round. And then kind of a black hole for two rounds. Michael Harris tends to go there in five by five leagues, but I have some doubts about him. And, you know, I'm focused on third base in round two. I'd like to get a second baseman in round three. So I tend to pass over Harris. Um, and then in the round four to five range, Southfield starts looking interesting again, but there are a lot of question marks. There are a lot of injury prone guys, but you still kind of have to, take them because you know how bad it's going to get. Uh, and there is that a second drop off that comes after the top 22 in my own rankings after Corbin Carroll. Um, and then there's about, you know, th that that's kind of, so Corbin Carroll is kind of the last who could deliver a stud outcome. And after that, there's about a dozen more who probably won't deliver a st stud outcome, but at least will probably be useful. And then once those are gone, it's just, ugh, it's just terrible. Uh, you know, I, I know having done all these different position preview podcasts, I've, I've said, oh, second base is the worst. All oh, third base is the worst. Well, outfield might actually be the worst, considering you need three of them in every league and five of them in some leagues, uh, you know, in contrast to third base where you take one and you're done. Outfield is one that, you you got to keep feeding that alligator. Scott, you're on record saying you'd love to start a draft outfield, third base, second base, and yep. that makes a ton of sense to me. Yep. So if you can pull it off, all the power to you. Top 24 outfielder that you will target most this season is whom? Well, it's it's going to be a first round outfielder, but it's, you know, that's kind of contingent on where in the first round I'm picking. So I'll say Kyle Schwarber, who's part of that second group of outfielders, the one that I'm looking to in the round four or five range. Kyle Schwarber is one who doesn't have any health concerns. And while Aaron Judge was a distant number one in home runs last year, Kyle Schwarber was second with 46. And uh, I think that's important because with the, the rule changes to encourage more stolen bases, specifically the limited number of pickoff attempts a pitcher gets in an at-bat, I think we're going to see an explosion of stolen bases to the point that home runs, while they'll technically be in higher number than steals, because of course they will, they'll begin to feel scarcer than steals. Like our experience is going to make us more desperate for, for home runs than, than stolen bases, or at least the gap's going to close there significantly. So to get a big chunk early that Kyle Schwarber's going to give you is important to me. Plus, I think the batting average last year is going to improve with the elimination of the shifts and everything. You know, just looking at his career batting average, it would stand to reason that'll improve for Schwarber. So I think he's a good pick there in the round four or five range if I'm not distracted by starting pitcher. Well, Scott, you started all of that off by saying Kyle Schwarber is one of the healthy outfielders. I'm going to go with one that is normally not healthy. That is Eloy Jimenez, who every time I think I'm out, he pulls me back in. He's dealt with various injuries, has only played 139 of 324 games over the past two years. But when he returned last year, the final three months, he hit over 300 with 15 home runs and an 859 OPS, which ranked ninth among qualified hitters. If he can ever, ever stay healthy for even 140 games, I think we can push 300 batting average, 30 plus home runs, really good RBI. Not going to steal any bases, but we're talking about an elite three-category contributor with Eloy Jimenez. Yeah, I mean, hopefully he's exclusively a DH this year, which would certainly help to stay healthy. I, I like him at his price a lot, too. 
Yeah, so let's uh, let's speak that into existence, Scott, because, man, a DH Eloy Jimenez sounds good to me. Who is a top 20 outfielder that you are avoiding a bust at the position? Yeah, I mentioned Michael Harris already. Because he fills so many needs, he's a potential five-category player, even though I have some doubts about him, I'd be more likely to draft him than this guy, Adolis Garcia, who I have as, a, as another bust possibility. He reached base at a 300 clip last year, managed to score 88 runs in spite of that. That's pretty anomalous. You don't see that very often. Also, the 101 RBI seemed pretty high given his uh, his level of production. So I expect those counting stats to fall. But more, it's the 300 on base percentage, which is the most important offensive skill from a real-world perspective. And, and Adolis Garcia has been playing bad at it the past couple years. And because he strikes out so much, if, if there's any slippage in the batting average that drags that OBP down to 275 or so, I, I don't know that the Rangers would be committed to playing a 30-year-old every day who's who's struggling that much in that area. So I I, I think there is a bottom-out scenario for for Garcia. I get it, Scott. I'm not not nervous about Adolis Garcia, but I paint a little bit of a more optimistic picture on our Full Lane podcast, and you can listen to that on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thank you for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye! <laughs> 